remember this point okay so let's move forward now next undamped vibration now undamped vibration means what now damp first of all what is damping damping means what anybody can define what is damping damping is nothing but the resistance to the motion damping is nothing but the resistance to the motion okay so whenever you are providing a resistance to the motion it is called the damping okay now in if there is no external resistance to the vibration of a system means what let us say this is a spring mass system right this is a spring mass system let us say i give a small initial displacement x k is the mass okay now whenever you are giving a small initial displacement x what will happen the system will start vibrating on its own due to the internal elastic forces because spring is a elastic element right and what will happen okay uh, energy will enter and energy will get dissipated but here you are not applying a external damper means what basically you try to understand that there are two cases let us say this is a case number 1 this is case number 1 m k okay now here there is no damper and let us say this is case number 2 so what is case number 2 This is a case number two. Okay, now here I am incorporating a damper. Now see, so this is only a M K system. This is nothing but a M C K system. Now try to understand that this system will vibrate, will become a dynamic when you are applying the X. This will also become a dynamic when you are giving a small initial displacement. But in this case, case number one, okay, there is no external damper. Means what? There is no external resistance. Means what? There is no C. So such a system is called as a undamped vibration, and here you will see that you are providing a C means what? You are providing a external resistance to the motion, and such a system is called as a damped vibration. Okay, so means what? Means what? In case number one, in this system, it is not so that there is no damping. There is a damping, but the damping is provided by the air resistance. Damping is provided by the air resistance. Means what? You are not providing an artificial resistance. Means what? The system will come to the rest. System will come to the equilibrium position after some period of time because of this air resistance which is already available. See, if you are placing this system in the vacuum, for example, if you take an example of a simple pendulum, we use simple pendulum as example here. Let me just give you a simple pendulum. Let us take an example of a wall clock. So there, you are isolating the system from the air resistance. Means what? There is no air resistance. Okay. so that is why that os pendulum keeps on oscillating but in this case number 1 here since there is a air resistance there is a resistance there is a damping but there is no ex external artificial damping okay in such a systems are called as a undamped vibration okay now basically negligible damping is also considered as a undamped condition negligible damping means what negligible damping means what air resistance okay so air resistance Which is there, which is acting on the system, is considered under the undamped vibrations only. Try to remember. If you are providing, if you take an example of a bike, car, automobile, there you are providing a damper. That is a suspension system. So it comes under the damped vibration. But here there is air resistance, so no damped vibration. Okay. Example you can take example of the best example is a simple pendulum. Okay. Now. In simple pendulum, we know that you are just giving us oscillate, give a small oscillation, give a small displacement. Simple pendulum will keep on vibrating. After some period of time, if you are uh, not isolating the system from the air, it will come to the steady state, mean to the rest. So, you make a little bit of a work. You take a string, suspend a small piece of mass to the string, and try to oscillate it. And try to oscillate it. Okay. So, what will happen after some period of time? You, it will come to the steady state. okay okay so now uh, as i said that uh, the time response graph is very very important now what is this time response graph okay time response means what x on x axis it is a time and what on y axis it is a output output means what response output and what is output in this case displacement okay so this displacement versus time is nothing but the out is nothing but the time response graph for undamped so now time response graph for undamped vibration see this is how here you will see that the uh, this is let us say this is a maximum displacement x what is the maximum displacement called as it is nothing but the amplitudes okay amplitude in undamped vibration in undamped vibration the amplitudes are neither decreasing neither increasing theoretically yeah? try to understand that i am talking theoretically practically what will happen that also i will tell now theoretically when there is no external damping the system is uh, comes under the undamped vibration the graph will be like this Here will be x. Here will be also x. Means what? Your x is constant in this case. X is constant in this case. Means what? 
if you see the graph of a time response that is a displacement time curve is 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 in a constant means it is neither moving to the infinity neither moving to the zero theoretically so such a vibrations are called as a steady state vibration so undamped vibrations are also called as a steady state vibration now this is happening theoretically okay practically what, what will happen in this case practically there is a air resistance air resistance means what there is some sort of resistance negligible resistance that is why actually this graph will become like this okay this graph will become like this and it may come to the zero it will come to the zero now if you take an example of a simple pendulum or, or you can take an example of a wall clock means tumhi ghadayacha pendulum bagitla tar to practically tyacha graph kasa yenar ahe asa yenar ahe ka kar tithe apan air resistance provide karat nahi tela apan vacuum madhe suspend karto so there the amplitude will neither decrease nor de nor increase okay is it clear so such a system is called as such a vibrations are called as a steady state vibration steady state vibration means what the steady state means what the system comes to a stable condition the system comes to a mean condition try to understand this is it clear next theoretically undamped vibrations continue indefinitely but practically vibrations die out as amplitude of vibration reduces means what i this is this is nothing but a theoretical graph what is practical graph this vibrations will see i will draw this vibrations will go on decreasing and it will come to the zero condition i hope you understand you have understand this okay so now these concepts are very important now damp vibration now what is damp vibration if external resistance is provided to the vibratory system so if you take an example of a simple spring mass system so here now i am taking a c k and m give a small displacement x now the system will start vibrating and this is c is nothing but a damping so damper is defined by the c spring is defined by the k and mass is defined by the m so basically a vibratory system has a three basic elements m c k okay is it clear so in this way the system will vibrate and if you provide the external damper the system then such a vibrations are called as a damp vibration guys i hope it is clear to you okay now you can see the graph now here basically you are providing some damping okay now here You are providing external level. Now here there is no such case theoretically or practically. Okay, theoretical or practical, as such, I wait to get case it is not there. Here you are providing an external damper. So what will happen? You can see that the amplitudes are decreasing. Amplitudes are decreasing means what? Let us say this is x1. Let us say this is x2. Capital x2. Capital x3. Capital x4. And some case in some time, let us say x5 is equal to zero or x10 is equal to zero. Means what? Your amplitudes are decreasing with respect to time. Now, this is under time means what? As t tends to infinity, your amplitude x goes on decreasing. Basically, guys, try to understand that whenever you are learning vibration, it is very very important to understand the graphs because okay. whenever you are using a lab view software, also you are not getting a values. You are getting a graphs only. It is very very important that you have to read the graphs. Machine can be maintained by even even an IT holder also. A anyone anyone can mach maintain the machine can do the conditioning modeling. But as an engineer, what is your role? You have to uh, read that graph. You have to design the system. I hope you understand this. Okay. So is it clear? What is exactly happening? Happening? What is exactly happening here? Okay. So external damping opposes the vibration. Basically, what happens in undamped vibration? There is no external damper, but there is a air resistance. and air resistance is negligible so that process becomes slow okay but here you are providing an external damper which you have designed artificially so it's a design uh, we can say uh, component or design element so that is why what happens this external damping c opposes the vibrations and this amplitude x1 x2 x3 x4 and let us say xn okay goes on decreasing in each cycle means what let us say Uh, now try to understand what is cycle. Let us say I, uh, point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four. So one to two is one cycle. Two to three is another cycle. Three to four is another cycle. So as the cycle number of cycle uh, goes on increasing, okay, what will happen? Uh, this uh, vibrations will die out. Means what? This a will become zero. That is x n is equal to zero. Try to understand this. Okay. Next example: vehicle moving over over the Rough surfaces. Vehicle moving over rough surface means what? You are driving a vehicle, automobile over a rough surface. Okay. So means what? There is an external 
uh, you can say uh, force which is applied on your suspension system coming from the road, road surface irregularities. Okay, road irregularities, right? So vehicle moving over a rough surface is the best example of a damp vibration. So here you will get a sine type wave. Okay, so such vibrations are called as a transient vibration. So these damp vibrations are called as a transient. Transient means what? Basically, transient means what? The output, the behavior of output changes with respect to time. Means what? Let us say what is output x? What is input? Sorry, uh, what is on x axis? Time. Okay, so you see that. Let us say this is a x. So this is a x1. This is a x2, x3, and this is a x4. Okay, means what? If I draw a curve, I will get a, this linear. I will get this exponential curve. Okay, see, this is what I am getting. Okay, now you can see that as the t tends to infinity. Okay, there is a change in the x. Change in the x means what? Change in the output, amplitude or displacement. Amplitude and displacement are one and the same. Only amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement. If x is the displacement, capital X is the maximum displacement amplitude. So you can see that. The behavior of output is changing with respect to time. When the behavior of output changes, means what? Let us say at let us say this is a time t1. Let us say this time t2. Let us say this is time t3. So at time t1, you have a different. You have a x1. At t2, you have a x2. At t3, you have x3. So there is a change in the behavior of output. That is why such vibrations are called transient system. And guys, try to understand that every system, every system. Every system initially pass, passes through a transient state and then reaches a steady state. So transient state is a state which will become zero, which is not a permanent state. And steady state is a state which is permanent state. Okay. I will draw this graph to explain. Let us say I will. This is let us say p. This is output is nothing but the x displacement. Let us say this is a graph. Okay. And zero. Now you can see. I am drawing this graph. Okay, and I will draw this line. Okay, now this phase, this phase is called as a transient phase. This phase is called as a transient phase, and this phase is called as a steady state. This phase is called as a steady state. Okay, and this time period is called as a transient time. This is called as a transient time, or this is also called as a settling time. This is also called as a settling time. Okay. Now, what do you understand? What do you understand? That initially it was a zero, then it started increasing, x1, then it went to the x2, and it went to the x3, and it went to the x4. So from x1, or let us say from zero to x4, zero to x4, what happened? Okay, zero to x4, what happened? There is a change in the output with respect to time. Means what? Your output is changing. Your output is not constant. So it is called as a transient state. It is called as a transient state. So after some time. After some time, this transient state will vanish. This transient state will eventually die out. This transient state will become zero, and the state will reach at this dotted line. And this state, and this state is called the steady state, where, where your output, that is x, is constant. X is constant, or it is zero. It is not necessary that x should be equal to the zero. Maybe the value of x is let us say two L. Whatever will be the magnitude, so that two L will remain constant. Okay. Or sometimes in some applications, it may not remain constant. It may change, like it may become 10, it may become 11, it may become 12. But the variation will be not as large as in the case of the transient state. So steady state is nothing but the state which is a permanent state which is reaches after the transient state. To me, fans example here. जब तुम इस fans चालू करते हो, initially at a zero time, the speed of the fan is very very less. As the time goes on increasing. The speed of the fan goes on increasing, whatever. Now, and at so at at some particular time, your fan will start rotating at a constant speed. So initially, when there was a change in the speed, speed is the output, na. So when there was a change in the speed with respect to time, so that phase is called as a transient phase. And then, uh, even if t tends to infinity, मतलब तुमसे time जरी infinity लगेगा, फिर तुमसे output में ते काही change जेट नहीं है, क्यों आले तरी ते खूब minute changes होते हैं. So that is called the steady state phase. Okay. So this is the difference between transient state and steady state. So damp vibrations are called as a transient vibration. Steady state vibrations are also called as a undamped vibration. I hope it is clear to you, all of you. Message me yes or no. Have you understand this phase? So I can move on to the next point. Now longitudinal vibrations. Now next time, what do you mean by the longitudinal vibration? Like you can say that 
if the mass m moves up and down along the axis of shaft now you can see what is axis of shaft this is nothing but the axis of shaft okay now if the mass moves along the axis of shaft there is a resulting vibrations of force and that means what the movement is like this up and down up and down movement is like aapla jo experiment number 4 ahe jo apan next week madhe perform karnar ahot that comes under the longitudinal vibration means what mass ki movement kashi hai up and down movement hai very very important if the mass moves up and down along the axis of shaft or you can say let us take an example of a spring and let us take an example of a mass okay so let us say this is the axis of the spring this is the spring axis so this is the spring axis now if this mass is moving up and down along the axis of the spring then it is called the longitudinal vibrations okay so it is clear so shaft is subject very important point design point shaft is subjected to alternate direct tensile and compression stresses so in longitudinal stress whenever the system or whenever the component is subjected to a longitudinal vibrations okay so whenever you are doing a stress analysis in this case we have to understand that the shaft is subjected to alternate direct tensile and compression stress okay is it clear okay example spring mass system moving along the axis of spring so same the spring mass system a spring which is vertically suspended the spring is vertically suspended okay and let us say if you give a small initial displacement x to the mass m1 then the vibrations are called as a longitudinal vibrations okay next transverse vibration if mass moves approximately perpendicular to the axis of shaft very important approximately na this word is very important approximately perpendicular to the axis of shaft you take an example of a simple pendulum in simple pendulum what happens let us say you are suspending the simple pendulum okay so it will move here theta it will move here theta so it's a moment kasa asel it's a moment kasa asel it's a moment kasa asel asa asel na asa horizontal moment asel ashi moment asel magasha case madhe kashi hoti ashi moment hoti up and down so hi ji moment hai ya moment la apan kay manto approximately perpendicular to the axis of shaft right is it clear okay so shaft is subjected to alternate bending stress so when when this mass is moving like this either to this left either to this uh, right or maybe either to this left okay means what it is moving perpendicular to the axis of shaft approximately approximately perpendicular mujhe exactly perpendicular kuthe hona jab unki mass ki position ashi hona okay now it is not necessary that the position of the mass is like this okay so it can be like this also so this will be the position of masses okay so this will be position of masses okay So these are nothing but the position of masses. So this is called as a transverse vibration. Even if we take an example of a bridge, okay, uh, motion of a beam perpendicular to the center line, motion of a beam perpendicular to the center line, or a bridge, a structure, a narrow tachoma bridge. Upon the body, la. That's why they want to make transverse vibrations as well. What are they? Okay. So these vibrations are also very very dangerous. So what are the stresses? Alternate bending stresses. बेंडिंग फेलियर now if you twist the circular disc mujhe kya tumhi jate circular disc se twist kele twist kele mujhe kya tumhi the small angular displacement theta dila so you can see this is a small angular displacement theta see this is a small angular displacement theta and this is a small angular so you give in any direction you twist anti clockwise or you twist clockwise so what you are giving you are twisting a disc by giving a small angular displacement so and let us say that you twist and untwist the disc and you release it mai tumhi sodun dya mhanje apan initial displacement deto maithe mass la apan initial displacement dile na x tasas ya disc la apan initial displacement dile theta so whenever you are giving a small initial displacement theta to the disc means what you are twisting and untwisting okay then then the resulting uh, vibrations the vibrations which are resulting in the system that is the shaft and the disc are called as a torsional vibrations i hope it is clear to you okay so what are the stresses the shaft is subjected to the torsional shear stresses 
so when the mass is subjected to a when a disc, disc and a shaft is subjected to a torsional vibration the resulting stresses will be a torsional shear stresses apan machine design madhe machine design one next semester la apan baghnar aho design of shaft mo teva apan shaft cha design karna so we will be designing a shaft for a bending we will designing a shaft for a because shaft is a rotating element na so stresses will generate and vibrations will be also there okay next now deterministic vibration now first of all you understand the graph of t response graph t response graph means like a time response graph of deterministic so it is you can see it is slightly a periodic graph okay and random vibration of the graph kaisa hai it is un, you can see it is random okay it is a random graph so you can see the difference between the two a random vibration and deterministic vibration now basically deterministic vibration means what something you can determine something you know okay if the magnitude of excitation force or motion acting on the system is known then the resulting vibrations are called as it means let us say that external exciting force external exciting force okay let us say external exciting force f is equal to x sin omega t okay now x sin omega t means what what is x x is nothing but the amplitude what is omega into theta what is omega into t omega into t is nothing but a theta and it's a sine component so this is called as a harmonic excitation as i want to upon harmonic excitation f is equal to x sin omega t this is called as a harmonic excitation this sorry okay so x is equal ha huh, so this is called as a harmonic excitation okay so f is called as a harmonic excitation that is x sin omega t is called as a harmonic excitation manje kay he tumhala maithi hai ki kutlya prakarcha tumhi force apply karta hai so such a vibrations are called as a deterministic vibration okay example periodic excitation if the magnitude of excitation force or the motion acting on the system is unknown for all time then the resulting vibrations are called as a vibration mean for example you can take an example of a earthquake okay sometimes you can take an example of a velocity of wind okay so these are some vibrations these are some uh, means what the magnitude of the excitation of force or the motion acting on the system is unknown for all time then they are called as a then they are called as a random vibrations okay so example wind velocity road roughness ground motion during earthquake so all comes under the okay so now in your syllabus we will be dealing with only with the periodic excitation means what we will be understanding only a deterministic vibration so we will be not dealing with a random vibration okay as i earlier said that vibration mechanical vibration is a very huge and a very you can say a vast subject so you have to study step by step uh, even you can do a phd in the mechanical vibrations also i hope you understand this right next now elements of now next point elements of vibrating system now till now you have understand that what are the basic elements of vibrating system now basic elements of vibrating system are m c k how will you remember m is nothing but a mass p c is nothing but a damper and spin is nothing but the k and f is nothing but the external excitation force let us say if i am applying a f in a downward direction so x x dot and x double dot will be in a downward direction okay so these are nothing but the elements of vibratory system okay so what is a mass mass stores the kinetic energy so mass is governed by inertia force so mass is always governed by inertia force try to understand this okay and kinetic energy so mass for kinetic energy kinetic energy is given by 1 k is equal to 1 of x dot square you know na it is nothing but a 1 of mv square and what is v velocity what is velocity x dot i hope you understand this because x is equal to dx x dot is equal to dx by dt velocity And x double dot is equal to dx square by dt square. So what's that? Okay. Spring stores potential energy. Now this potential energy is called as a internal potential energy. Internal potential energy, or you can call it as a strain energy. Okay. And then potential energy that is a mgh. This is a different one. This is due to the gravitational force. This is called as a gravitational potential energy. And this is basically called as a strain energy. or elastic potential energy or internal potential energy that is basically due to the elasticity and this is due to the gravitational force g m mass and h is nothing but the height with respect to the datum position with respect to the datum position so two types of potential energy you have to understand next 
So potential energy that is stored in the swing is given by one of k into x square. Okay, is it clear? It's a good one. Let's try it. And damper. What is damper? Damper dissipates energy gradually. Means what? Mass will store k, swing will store p. Then it will be uh, there will be the conversion of energy k into p. How does the energy enter inside the system? Because of this x to x action. So the damper will what? It will remove the energy and it will. Stop the oscillation, stop the vibration, and bring the system to the steady state condition. Steady state, or you can say rest condition. Okay. And the formula for damper is the it is given by work done by the damper. Now I see I will not go into the derivation of all this formula because we don't have so much time, and this already we have studied and not necessary. Okay. So damper dissipates energy gradually. So, if you want to calculate the work done by the damper, see, you cannot calculate. There is no such energy inside the damper. What is the damper? Damper is doing a work. What work? It is doing a work of removing the energy. So, how do you calculate it? You calculate it by minus integration of c equivalent x dot into dx. Okay. Now, why this x dot? Why this x? And why x double dot? We will come to know in the next slide. Means what? Mass is given by x dot square. It is governed by x square, and it is governed by only x dot. Means what? Acceleration, velocity, and displacement. Okay. Now, first of all, mass. Okay. Now let us understand about the mass. So you know everything about the mass. Mass is not the name of the movie. First of all, try to understand. There was a movie called as a mass, but here it's a different mass. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting mass. Very very interesting mass. So this mass is denoted by small force m. Now let us say that consider the mass m as shown in the figure. Okay, this is the mass m which I have shown in the figure. Okay, now let us say that x is the initial displacement of the mass given to the system. Now in which direction I have applied the force? I have applied the direct force in the uh, sorry right of the mass. Okay, so displacement will be also towards the applied force that is f. Now you know that. Displacement is always in the direction of the applied force. Okay, remember the displacement of the mass always takes place in the direction of the applied force, which results in inertia force. Now you know that because of this displacement x, okay, the inertia force will always act opposite to the displacement. Means what? The अतः अतः ये ये गोष्ट अपन मॉडल नंबर टू में जो बगीच ले, क्या बगीच ले? What we have seen in model number two, exciting force and inertia force. Let us say this is the x, this is the f means what? This is the x dot and this is the x double dot. So inertia force is always equal and opposite to the accelerating force. That is the x. Nothing but the inertia. Accelerating. So this inertia force is resulted because of the direction of the applied force. Okay. Let me prove something. Okay. Now let us say that left f is the inertia force. So now you know that what is f? F is equal to m into m a. F is equal to m into m a. Now, what is acceleration? Acceleration is given by x double dot. That is m into x double dot. Why? Because we know that velocity v is equal to dx by dt. That is x dot. And acceleration a is equal to d square x by dt square. That is x double dot. Okay. So that is why f becomes m into x double dot. And this f is equal to m into x dot is called as a inertia force. Okay. So what is inertia force? Inertia force is equal to m into x dot. Means what? You have to always remember in your mind till the end of this vibration subject from the universe. I am saying that mass is always drawn by the inertia force and given by m into x double dot. If the system is a torsional system, then it becomes a torque T is equal to I into theta double dot. Because if the system is now you understand what is torsional system. You are giving an angular displacement. Okay. Simple in simple pendulum, you are also giving a small angular displacement theta. But then the orientation is different. Then the vibrations are transverse. Okay, so a mass connected to the shaft or the disc is a uh, what I what I can say torsional vibration. Okay, so this I theta double dot is called as an inertia torque. It is called as an inertia torque. Hello, upon time, onto inertia torque because this T is nothing but a torque, na, and F is nothing but a force in the linear system. So M into H double dot is an inertia force. I into theta double dot is an inertia torque. मैसेज करा ये सब नो हैव यू अंडरस्टैंड सो काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज गिवन बाय वन ऑफ एम इनटू एक्स डॉट स्क्वायर सो 
वेलोसिटी v इज इक्वल टू x डॉट सो काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू ओके हे सगळं संबंध बाळणं तुम्हाला गरजेचं आहे ओके नेक्स्ट स्प्रिंग नो व्हाट इज स्प्रिंग स्प्रिंग स्टोर्स पोटेंशियल एनर्जी नाउ यू नो दैट अ स्प्रिंग स्टोर्स अ पोटेंशियल एनर्जी नाउ लेट अस टेक एन एग्जांपल ऑफ अ स्प्रिंग हैविंग अ के ओके एंड यू आर अप्लाइंग द फोर्स इन द डायरेक्शन नाउ यू नो दैट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज ऑलवेज इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द अपलाइड फोर्स सो दिस इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द x ओके सो स्प्रिंग स्टोर्स पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड फोर्स रिक्वायर्ड to cause the displacement is directly proportional to the displacement of the spring means what this f is always directly proportional to the x means what the force required to cause the displacement manje tumcha spring madhe let us say tumche spring initially a spring ki length hoti initially tumcha spring ki length hoti evdi 10 cm okay nantar dali a spring ki length 11 cm so net displacement kiti zala 1 cm so 1 cm displacement hona sathi kiti force apply zala so that force f is directly proportional to this displacement okay always remember this that means what let us say let x is a displacement so f is directly proportional to x okay so f is directly proportional to x so f is equal to k into x and this f is equal to k into x is called as what spring force k is not a spring force k is nothing but a stiffness okay but k into x is nothing but a spring force because you can see na न्यूटन मीटर मल्टीप्लाई बाय मीटर 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 गेट्स कैंसल सो फोर्स यू विल गेट इनटू द न्यूटन ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस ओके सो नाउ हाउ इज द स्प्रिंग गवन स्प्रिंग इज गवन बाय व्हाट स्प्रिंग इज गवन बाय द स्प्रिंग आता म्हणते मी तुम्हाला दोन गोष्टी सांगितल्या m x डबल डॉट एंड सेकंड वन इज नथिंग बट अ k या झाल्या दोन गोष्टी सो m x डबल डॉट्स मास k इनर्शिया फोर्स k x स्प्रिंग फोर्स इज इट क्लियर इज इट क्लियर नाउ Basically, I would like to explain that the spring attached. Now, in this case, in this case, uh, the spring was fixed at the one end. But in your practical example, the spring may be uh, spring may be. Let us say that spring may be. Uh, I can say attached between the two masses. The spring is attached between the mass M1 and mass M2. Okay. Now, if the spring is attached between the mass M1 and M2, so basically, what is the net displacement and what is the spring force? that you have to understand because that becomes a slightly a calculation part okay so here f is equal to kx is not valid why because the spring is attached between the two masses so now here let us say that let us say that x1 is the displacement of mass m1 and x2 is the displacement of mass m2 now this is a two coordinate system this is a two degrees of freedom system now this is not in your syllabus but basically you have to understand the concept okay let us say that force applied is in this direction so x1 and x2 are nothing but displacement of mass m2 now you understand that you have to you have to assume something and you are assuming that x1 is greater than x2 now if x1 is greater than x2 the net displacement of the spring will be x1 minus x2 the net displacement of the spring will be x1 minus x2 for example let us say that the total length of the spring is 30 cm okay total length of the spring is 30 cm x1 is 5 cm and this is 4 cm okay so now what is the net displacement so net displacement will be 1 cm that is a 5 minus 4 5 minus 4 that is a x1 minus x2 so net displacement will be 1 cm so tumche spring madhe net displacement kiti zala 1 cm ne mi kasa calculate kela x1 minus x2 ani yacha mane mi assume kay kela x1 is greater than x2 this is always you have to assume let x1 is greater than x2 is it clear guys is it clear okay now resolving the spring forces now basically you have understand that first of all uh ha huh, sorry now what is the net what is the net displacement x1 minus x2 now tell me what will be the spring force in this case spring force ka asmara f will be k into x1 minus x2 right मगरच्या केस मध्ये एफ इज इक्वल टू के इन टू एक्स होता या केस मध्ये स्प्रिंग फोर्स किती झाला एफ इज इक्वल टू के इन टू एक्स वन मायनस एक्स टू आता हा कसा ऍक्ट होतो डायरेक्शन स्प्रिंग मध्ये मास मध्ये काय डायरेक्शनचा मॅटर नाहीये डायरेक्शन इनर्स ऑफ फोर्स विल बी ऑलवेज ऍक्टिंग ऑपोजिट टू द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ओके बट हियर यू हॅव टू टेक केअर ऑफ द डायरेक्शन इन केस ऑफ द स्प्रिंग ओके सो डायरेक्शन लेट अस से दॅट लेट अस से दॅट आता टोटल आता मला सांगा या केस मध्ये या केस मध्ये नॉट टेल मी नेट डिस्प्लेसमेंट नेट डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द स्प्रिंग किती आहे तुमचं एक्स वन मायनस एक्स टू आहे दॅट इज नथिंग बट अ वन सेंटीमीटर आता वन सेंटीमीटर जर तुमचं हे नेट डिस्प्लेसमेंट असेल नाव इमॅजिन दॅट इमॅजिन जस्ट ट्राय टू अंडरस्टँड दॅट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द स्प्रिंग इज डिस्प्लेस बाय फाय सेंटीमीटर ओके 
forget about this 4 cm forget about it is 0 for example now spring is displaced by 5 cm so tell me what will be the total length of the spring Any 25 message forget about this 4 cm 25 spring is displaced by 5 cm means what it is moving to the right side the spring will get compressed so what will be this total length of the spring if it is displaced by a 5 cm what will be the total length of the spring message me i am not you are not audible to me you are not audible to me 25 some, some technical problem till i sort out it please message 25 okay so now total length of the spring is 25 now now consider this side now let us say that this is 25 cm now you are moving now you are displacing this mass m2 by 4 cm towards the right side you are displacing it towards the right side now tell me what will be the total length of the spring now what will be the total length of the spring 29 yes 29 now original length was 20 this length is 29 now tell me what is the net displacement net displacement kiti jala tumcha spring the net displacement kiti jala Original 30 or the and 5 cm and 4 cm apply again the 20 cm. Net displacement is another room. It's equal to how many centimeters? 1 cm. One so 1 cm is compressed. Zala. Now, what is x1 minus x2? x1 minus x2 is equal to 1 cm. So, the theory is correct that the net displacement is always equal to x1 minus x2. One day, spring cha, doni end the kutla force act of compressive ka tensile. Mass cha, which is spring, let us say spring should don't end set. The don't end la kutla force act the compressive cut inside the spring to compressive. Yes, okay. Now come here. Now you can see, let us say this is x1, this is x2. Okay, now compressive force kasa act on a asa act on a f. Now let us say that this is nothing but a compressive force acting. Now, now your spring force is the force is the restoring force. Try to understand this concept that inertia force. Spring force. Hey, hello. Actually, upon technically, kai monto hai. Upon restoring force monto. Restoring force manje kai. Ashe force. Je tumcha system la. Tacha original position la ande se prepare karta hai. They are trying to bring the system to their original position. Means what? If the mass is displaced by x, inertia force will bring the mass to its original position. If spring is displaced by x, spring force force will bring the system to its original position. Manun upon inertia force and spring force. A restoring force mundo upon the and he had forces at inertia force and spring force they will always act opposite to the external exciting force or it will always act opposite to this okay so that we bagit luck the spring force at the spring force from the kasa act on other now the spring force let us say this is nothing but a compressive force see this compressive force is acting inward so now this compressive force is trying to compress the spring trying to displace the spring so what is the spring force now Spring force is nothing but the k into x1 minus x2. So the spring force will act opposite to this compressive force. Now this compressive force is towards the left side. So this spring force will also act towards the opposite. That is the right side spring force. And now this spring force is given as f is equal to k into x1 minus x2. Is it clear? Is it clear? Now this is correct. This is correct. But just what I will do a small modification. Now you. When you solve the solution, you can do the confusion. Now, how much is the displacement? x1. How much is the displacement? x2. Now, in this case, x1 and the spring force are opposite. But here, since the spring is connected between the two masses, your x2 and this f are in the same direction. If you have opposite direction, you can do the same direction. So, if you have the same direction, f is equal to minus k into x1 minus x2. So instead of writing minus k, I can write f is equal to k into x2 minus x1. Is it correct? Is it correct? Now you can see that this spring force f is opposite to this x1 and this spring force f is opposite to this x2. Sorry, opposite to this x2. Okay. Manjas kai, jeva tumchi spring, don masses made connected as the eka side la eta f is equal to k into x1 minus x2 and dusha side la as the k is equal to x2 minus x1. Assuming that x1 is greater than x2 and this f is equal to k into x1 minus x2 and f is equal to k into x2 minus x1, the direction is opposite to the displacement. Okay. So mass chap up the hot neighbor spring chap up the analysis Now please message me. Have you understand this analysis or you have some doubt in this? So I can move forward. Please message me fast. Is there any doubt in this? Have you understand this? 
the how i have resolved the spring force if you have not understand i will help you to understand again chalo yes everybody sagena direction clear jale sagena direction mahatvacha otherwise tumhi problem solve karta na chukna direction is very very important see x1 x2 x1 la opposite spring force f x2 la opposite spring force f okay but here k into x1 minus x2 here k into x2 minus x1 you can also write f is equal to k into x1 minus x2 but direction will be same as the x2 that is very very important and last is the thing but a damper now take an example of a damper okay now let us say that consider the mass m and let us say that f is the applied force now x is the direction x is the displacement in direction of applied force and let us say this is the c damper external damper connected to the mass m okay now this let us say frictional force now damping means what it is a one of one type of a frictional force okay now this frictional force or you can also call it as a damping force this frictional force is also called as a damping force now basically try to understand that we are considering a zero friction we are considering a zero friction in case of this in case of the vibration okay but this frictional force is nothing but a damping force itself means what it's a opposite force na this is trying to bring the system to its original position okay so understand that this frictional force f or you can also call it as a damping force means the damping force hi manu shakta basic practically the just convenient hai right? so this damping force is always equal opposite to this f and x okay now this damping force f is always directly proportional to the x dot okay damping force always remember that damping force damping force f is directly always directly proportional to the x dot and what is x dot velocity of mass m x dot is equal to velocity of mass m so guys tumhala evana kalla asel ki in that mass in spring force mass is proportional to acceleration in spring k is proportional to x and in well Damper C is proportional to x dot. Means what? Velocity. Okay. And now you can write this as if f is directly proportional to x, that then f is equal to C into x dot, right? So where where this f is nothing but a damping force Newton, and damping coefficient C is nothing but a damping coefficient. See what is C? C is nothing but a damping coefficient constant, which is equal to f upon x. X dot. Sorry. What is the unit of f? Newton. What is the unit of x dot velocity meter per second? So unit is also see the newton seconds per meter. Okay, is it clear? Okay, so finally, now finally the equation of motion. So what will be the equation of motion for a spring mass system? Now this is the basic equation of motion. A spring mass system having m c k as a parameter. The equation of motion will be m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f. Clear? So again, a clear dale. So again, a clear dale. Ka. Where f m where m x dot double dot is a inertia force, c x dot is a damping force, p x dot is okay. अतः जब अपन प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करना, जब अपन एनालिसिस करना, the equation of motion will be always in terms of these three. Maybe मुझे तुमसे असर ये करता चित phi आता m तुम सब लेटर से phi है सिर्फ, so m ची वैल्यू कहते रहो सिर्फ, c ची वैल्यू कहते रहो सिर्फ, k ची वैल्यू कहते रहो सिर्फ, कि वाले लेटर से तुम सब m है सिर्फ phi m into x double dot plus six c into x dot plus ten k into x is equal to hundred newton, okay? so whatever will be the value that depends upon the system, but basically the equation of motion will remain same, that is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to m, so this is for a linear system okay for torsional system it will remain again same but the parameters will change now guys tell me have you understand this have you understand so anybody ask you what is the equation of most basic equation of motion for a simple vibratory system having mck as a parameter you will say mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f okay is it clear Okay, now very very important. Now when the vibrations are free vibration, this f will be always equal to zero. Why? Why it will be zero? Because we are giving only initial displacement. So equation becomes 
mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero. So this is called as a free vibration. If the vibration is forced vibration, let us say that f is equal to x sine omega t. Means what? You are applying a no deterministic vibration. That is a periodic vibration. X sine omega t. So this will become mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to x sine omega t. Okay. So equation of motion will remain same. Only this f will change. If it is a random, we don't know f. We have to use some instruments. Okay. अतः मतलब संगत तुम्हारे समझ लो सिर्फ तुम्हारे मैसेज करा. So I can move to the last point. Yes. Have you understand this message? Perfect. Not message. Have you understand the concept? See, I am taking a lot of lectures to help you to understand the basic concept of vibration because your all four models are depending upon the basic concepts which I am explaining you. Okay. Now spring in series again very very important point. See, you have finally you have to do the mathematical analysis. There will be a pulley. There will be a shaft. There will be a spring. There will be a masses. Each and everything connected, and it becomes a system complex. You have to apply your theory, which I am explaining you, and finally find out the natural frequency. Okay, so spring in series. Okay, so now when the, you know what is the spring in series, let us say K1 and K2 are the two spring connected to the series. So equivalent system will be one upon K is equal to one upon K1 plus K2. Okay, so this is nothing but the formula for the spring in series. Next, spring in parallel. Okay, spring in parallel. So when the K1 and K2 are connected like this, or let us say K1 and K2 are connected between the two masses, between the mass, then it becomes a parallel, and for parallel, K is equal to K1 plus K2. Okay, we are always interested in equivalent system. Even when you are solving a problem, there may be a number of masses. Okay, try to understand, my dear students. There will be a number of masses. There will be a number of springs. So you have to always find out the K equivalent, M equivalent, and C equivalent. Okay, equivalent mass, equivalent C, and then you write down the equation: mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot is equal to zero, and then you will accordingly find out the natural frequency omega n by using a fundamental equation: x double dot plus omega n square x is equal to zero. 